Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, V1B Flyer here, and I've got the Battletech paint starter set from Catalyst Games and Army Painter. I've taken the plastic off just so it doesn't reflect onto the camera here, but this is the box. You get 10 paints and a brush. On the back, it shows the color swatches of the paints included. Little uh, advertisement there for camo specs online, as well as the new miniatures from Catalyst. One brush on primer, five speed paints, one metallic paint, three standard war paints, and the starter brush. I was told this is MSRP of $45, which is in line with just about every product on Army Painter's website. There's the paints. There's also some literature inside. I will never get old of that art, never tire of it. This is a basic starter guide to how to use the primer, speed paints, and then some tips on what to do to accent and detail the miniature and make it look good. There's a video guide QR code. I have not checked that out yet. And here's all the other colors available in the war paint range and speed paint range. This is the standard Army Painter painting guide if you've ever bought anything from them. There's some good stuff in here. It talks about all their different products, how to get started, and what you can do with some of their washes and techniques for applying things. Customer service in case anything's missing, leaking, broken. And now the important part, what's in the box? This is a starter brush is what it's labeled as, but I believe it's probably a number one or a number two as far as the size is concerned, and it's a detail brush, at least it's what it appears to be. For the paints, we've got five of the speed paints, and when we've got the war paints and the primer and metallic. I'm gonna do these one at a time and show you the comparisons between what the existing paint line is, because all of these paints, with the exception of the white primer, are available in a different name from Army Painter. They're just rebranded or relabeled to a Battletech theme. Starting off with the speed paints, here's Corita Red. And that's the same as the current Blood Red speed paint that you can get now. Both of them include agitators, which is really required for speed paint. You really need to make sure that they're shaken well before you start. Steiner Blue, is kind of your medium blue, and it's the same as the current High Lord blue. Liao Green is the emerald jade color, and it's the equivalent of orc skin. Davian Green is more of a drab military color, and it's the same as the camo cloak color. Merrick Purple is the same as Purple Alchemy. I know the label looks a little pink, and we'll talk a little more about that later. For the war paints, you get Hazard Yellow, which is the same as Babe Blonde, and they did include an agitator in this, whereas this one, which I just bought, did not have it. So it seems that Army Painters started putting agitators in all their bottles, and that's a good thing. PPC Blue, I believe is Void Shield Blue, and I didn't have that one already in my possession, so here's my high-priced visual aid that you can all enjoy. I worked really hard on it. Battlefield Brown is your mid-medium brown, which I think is the same as Leather Brown. I could be wrong, but I also really wanted to use this visual aid. For your metallic, Actuator Metal is the same as the current Gun Metal. I really like this metallic. I'm glad they included this one. And then lastly is Factory Primer. Now it's white here. The only one I could find on the Armor Painter website was a gray brush on primer. So this might be the only way you can get this for right now. They do have a airbrush version of white primer, but I don't know if it's the same and just rebottled. I couldn't get that answer. My overall first impression of the box set are pretty decent. So, I'm mixed on a couple of the war paints, but the speed paints are a good choice. I like the colors that they've got. 
not everything's going to always be perfect and we all have our personal you know thoughts on well is that a flat red is that a davian green is that a merrick purple but overall this is geared towards someone maybe new to BattleTech and just wants to paint house colors or wants to paint a lot of miniatures and that's really where the speed paints are going to be beneficial to someone that's either not painted a lot of BattleTech before or perhaps this is a good set for someone that plays and paints other games too because speed paints really shine on organic models as well. As far as the other colors, the Actuator Metal, as I said earlier, is a really good metallic. I actually use it a lot prior to this set coming out. It's on a lot of my miniatures. The Factory Primer, I have not had a chance to try that out yet. It's a brush on primer, which means it's probably going to require, you know, a couple or more coats to make sure you get good even coverage, especially if you want those speed paints to really do their best. Smooth undercoat is really very important. As far as the three war paints are concerned, I don't have a problem with the brown at all. That's very useful. I'm struggling a little bit with the yellow and the blue choice. They're a little bit niche for what I think. It's cool to have a PPC blue and a hazard yellow and I get the intent behind weapon effects and I'm thinking maybe hazard stripes or something along that line. You can do a lot of things with yellow, don't get me wrong. I just feel that if someone was wanting to start painting and learn how to paint, if this had a black and a gray in it, it would be much better than the two war paints that were included here. And that's just my personal opinion. That being said, anywhere selling this in a hobby store is going to have a black, a light gray, a medium gray, uh, a white paint, because primer isn't always uh, the most predictable when it comes to painting with it. So I, I do encourage people to paint with a white paint, but, um, factory primer it's probably a polyurethane type of primer so it's gonna have some different drying qualities and it can be rough on your brushes so great for you know touching stuff up and again if you, you don't have anything else and you can prime whenever the, whenever the weather is not cooperative for spray paint or whatever but uh, so I don't have a problem with the speed paints and the two I guess you call them you know, metallic and the technical um, but the, the blue and the yellow are a little bit Kind of a, hmm, I don't think I would have made that choice personally, but this is what we've got. Now let's talk about speed paints and the paints in general. For the Karita Red and the Steiner Blue, or the Blood Red and Hylor Blue, if you have the original line, I have not had a chance to paint a mech with either of these colors. Now the example in the booklet included with the paint set shows the Karita Red. Um, I believe that's probably gonna be you know, pretty well an example of what you're going to get out of this paint. Undercoats have a lot of impact on speed paints or contrast paints, anything that's used to try to get a one and done type of method. So keep that in mind, especially when you're coming up with what you want to paint or ideas for how you might want to change the properties and the overall result with these paints. So don't worry, I'll get to making some tutorials with these paints in the near future. The two paints I don't have some experience with are the PPC Blue and Factory Primer. I've heard good things about Void Shield Blue for highlights and brightening and layering. I haven't had a chance to paint an entire miniature, but it's almost like a sky blue, so there might be some, some use for that maybe if you're doing a, a bit of work on some of the speed paint after you've maybe sealed it. So, And I'll talk a little more about that. Again, I haven't tried out the primer yet, I didn't have an opportunity, but I'll see how that goes. I need to mention that I painted these models with original speed paints and not the new Battletech set. Army Painter has announced they're changing the formula of their speed paints to only allow for about a two hour reactivation time before being fully cured. I do not know if these paints are the new formula or not. I'll let you know if I find out in some subsequent videos. I have been able to try these three. The Liao Green, Davian Green, and Merrick Purple I've had some pretty good results. Now the Phoenix Hawk has Liao Green on the top and Davian Green on the bottom, both over a white primer. I use speed paint for the cockpit as well. There'll be a tutorial for how to do a reactivation red style cockpit. The Raven was done with black primer, which I know isn't included in the set, but sometimes you're gonna have to get some things not included in a basic set. But once I put the metallic over the black, then I put the Liao Green over the top of that and I got that metallic sheen just ever so slightly. I probably could have maybe 
applied it a little thinner. You'll see when you start working with it. But I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I really like that that metallic jade emerald color. Uh, I also did the re reactivation red cockpit on this one and it actually turned out much better than I thought it would. And I did actually use that hazard yellow under the red for the uh, speed paint method. So it actually did have some use, but I, w I don't think I'm gonna paint a whole miniature with that yellow. Now Merrick Purple, you're gonna see, obviously it's got some shine to it. I've sealed it with a uh, clear coat, but I tried it with this one to put a white undercoat on the right side, or it's left, your right, and then a medium gray, mid gray, neutral gray kind of color on the left. And this was kind of the result. I wanted to see what purple I preferred, and this is exactly what I'm talking about with you being able to change the properties and the overall results of the speed paints by undercoats as well as thinning. Now they make a speed paint medium to thin the speed paints, it retains its properties. If you plan on thinning these, I suggest you get that. Water will kind of work, but I haven't diluted it more than just a little bit, and I couldn't tell you one way or the other if that's gonna kind of break the paint and cause it to do things that maybe you don't want, like splotchiness and things like that. So just keep that in mind. I know, again, another thing to maybe buy, but if you buy the entire speed paint set, you actually get a bottle of it and it works well. Now, if you haven't already noticed, I've got some hazard stripes on here, hazard yellow. I messed around with that yellow over multiple different colors and then tried another brand's yellow and the yellow was definitely yellow. If you've heard of what it's like to paint yellow in the miniature world, it's definitely not someone's favorite or most people's favorite and I don't really encourage people that are learning to paint to start with a yellow. That being said, I'll try to do my best to show what worked or can kind of get you a better result and hopefully keep you from the throwing it across the room frustrated and breaking your brushes in half. Let's talk briefly about the things I think you'll need if you buy this paint set and you're just getting into painting miniatures. You're gonna need more than those the brush that's included. I've just got a selection here type of dry brush, flat or chiseled brush, a bit of a larger serve, a larger barreled brush, the barrel's the width there, uh, to help you apply base coats, washes, and things like that. That one little detail brush, if you try to do everything with it, you will ruin it quickly. Now, you can get some cheap synthetic brushes from a, a Hobby Lobby or a, a hobby store. You can buy some of the Army Painter brushes. They actually have pretty good brushes for if you're at the you know local hobby store, things like that, or order some, that's fine. I like to use Monument Hobbies, but if you're just starting out, I recommend maybe some lower cost synthetics ones because you're gonna make some mistakes and maybe ruin a brush or two. I highly encourage you to get a brush soap. It doesn't have to be from Pro Acryl or anything like that, but their brush soap is really good, but there's a few different out there. Masters makes one. And honestly, Dawn dish soap, if you're not gonna get into it, too much of the painting every every now and then will work just fine. It's It'll at least clean the acrylic out. Let's talk about the, the big one that everybody wants to ask about when it comes to speed paints is reactivation. So you're gonna need, I recommend I should say, a varnish. You can't use brush on varnish, it'll reactivate the paint, or at least some of them. I'd had a little bit of reactivation on the Liao Green when I was m testing out a model, not this one, but it got wet when I was airbrushing a varnish on and it kind of started to show some issues. So keep that in mind that you don't want to use a brush on primer and you don't want to, probably don't want to use an airbrush if you spray it on heavily. Once you put a clear coat, it can be, I like to use Rust-Oleum, I've never had a problem with any sort of blushing or uh, hazing, but a hobby, you know, spray paint for, or a clear coat from Army Painter, or if you can find Tester's Dull Coat, that's fine. Whatever you have access to, it doesn't need to be a lot. It's a quick shot over it. And this stuff I really like just because it, I've never had an issue. It dries within 30 minutes and I'm on to doing whatever I want. Now the whole speed paint thing of, well, if I got to do a varnish, is it really a speed paint? Yes, most likely because it's geared to painting more than just one model. I mean, you know, I sat around and waited for this stuff to dry and did other things. But realistically, I should be painting four, eight, 12, whatever, all at the same time. And then by the time you get back to maybe those first few, they're either mostly dried or they're closer to being dried. So you're not wasting a lot of time. But just, you know, think about that. You don't have to varnish them. 
but if you go back after using the speed paint and you start doing things with a very wet brush or you, they get wet or anything like that or even applying decals because the, their water slide transfers you run the risk of some of the colors at least being easier to reactivate than others like i said this light green this orc skin slash liao green seems to go pretty easy the Merrick Purple did as well. I've painted some other speed paint miniatures uh, for like 28 millimeter war game scale, and I hadn't really had too much of an issue. I just wanted to get that out there that I really recommend you throw a quick varnish after you're done with your speed paint. You can paint afterward on top of it, there's no problem whatsoever. So, or just be very, very careful and don't apply so much paint that everything's getting wet or damp enough to where you're gonna end up ruining what you did. That being said, since I'm talking about a tutorial where I'm gonna reactivate the red, I'm gonna teach you how to reactivate the paint on purpose to get a result that looks actually really good for, for what it is. So, uh, but just keep that in mind. There, if, if enough paint or enough moisture and water or, or medium will reactivate paint, most paints, it's true. You'll have to try to do it with some of the other paints, but speed paints and to a degree, some contrast paints, the thinner ones, lighter colors tend to be a little bit susceptible, but. Uh, contrast paint by, by no means anywhere near what the speed paint range seems to have at least a issue but um, I varnish every model uh, if you're gonna play with it you should probably varnish it it protects the paint that being said you know a six dollar seven dollar can of spray paint of spray clear varnish is probably a worthwhile investment if you're gonna be painting a lot and then lastly just to emphasize that there's a few more colors that will be very useful to you and in those miniatures that I painted I did have to use a couple other colors the spectrum the monochrome spectrum is always going to be helpful to you here's to show that I don't just only have one type of paint I like different colors as well so if you have a hobby store near you I encourage you to support them and buy from them uh, if not and you need to order them online uh, you know try to go to one retailer most likely to save on shipping and get a few I recommend a black some sort of medium to you know, mid gray and a white that you're happy with. Now, again, I don't know if this primer will sub for a lot of that. If you're doing one little thing here and there, that's fine. But if you're trying to, you know, paint a bunch of stripes and things like that, I don't know if this, this is gonna be as useful. More on that, but I'm fairly certain that this primer is gonna be more for just base coating. And if you're painting a lot of miniatures and you're priming a lot of them with just this, this is gonna need, this is gonna go a lot faster than you think, especially if you're covering a miniature a couple times with it. All right, some final thoughts. I love that Battletech is popular and it's getting out into everywhere. Barnes and Noble, the you know, Army Painter Paint collaboration, uh, Kickstarter is successful. A lot more people talking about Battletech. Alpha Strike's coming up on its own. The box sets are very popular. This is a great time to be a Battletech fan or be starting out getting into Battletech. So lots of great people in the community. I've always had a good time interacting with just about everyone. So that being said, I like that there's a product. There's a, you know, is it perfect? No, but I don't think any paint set or at least a small limited palette paint set is ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be a few more that you need. And that's kind of the, <laughs> that's kind of the point with hobbies is that you start out a little bit, think it's not going to be a big thing. And then before you know it, you have, a couple hundred paints sitting in front of you at my desk like I do. Um, so, am I happy that it's out? Yes. Could it use a little tweaking? Sure. Are there a few things to look out for in gotchas when it comes to speed paints, brush on primers, things like that? Absolutely. I will do my best to make some tutorials to help you all out and be successful at the paint schemes. Plan on just seeing the basic house colors being used in, in more popular or well-known units. I'll see what I can do about some other colors and possibly even some other speed paints because you can buy those at a hobby store or you can order them at the same time. They're, you know, just a few dollars for, for one color. So if you decide you want to make a bunch of, you know, brown or Comstar, oh boy, uh, getting into white or anything like that. So then you, you'll have hopefully some, some options for you and some experience with some of the other speed paints to kind of get familiar. That's all for me for now. Thanks for watching. Tex, take us out. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Check out our website at camospecs.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.